Hi, sixth graders. So last week we talked about the Holy Kurbana. I hope you did your assignments, answer the questions, and memorize your Bible verse. This week we're going to talk about the Holy Kurbana some more, as well as the structure of it. There are two parts of the Holy Kurbana, according to the Mullingar Catholic Church. The first part is the secret preparatory service, also known as Tuyubo, in Syriac, which means service of preparation. The second part is the public service. That's the service of the catechumens and the service of the faithful, anaphora. All the works of salvation of God from the creation of the universe to the second coming of Christ are remembered in the Holy Kurbana. In the preparatory service, the following events are remembered. God created the universe, the creation of man, and the call of Abraham and that led Israel in the Old Testament. At the beginning of the morning prayers, the candle is lit and the veil is drawn open. This signifies the creation of the universe and the beginning of the divine revelation. When the priest enters the sanctuary after the morning prayers and requests the prayers of the faithful and the veil is drawn across the sanctuary, this signifies the first sin of man and the separation of man from God. The service of preparation consists of prayers and penitence and preparation of the bread and wine on the altar, which is known as the thronos. The service of preparation is divided into two parts. One the service of Melchizedek, and two, the service of Aaron. The priest puts on his sacred vestments and incenses the Holy Kurbana. Let's talk about the service of Melchizedek for a little bit. The bread and wine is arranged on the thronos. Melchizedek is the priest of the Most High God, even before priesthood established among the Israelites. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 18, we remember Melchizedek received Abraham by carrying the bread and wine. Melchizedek re represents the priesthood of Christ. Let's talk a little bit about the service of Aaron. Aaron, the first priest among the Israelites, is another representative of Christ. The priest performs the service, putting on the sacred vestments and incenses, the offering in the Holy Kurbana, like the priestly service and incensing of Aaron. During this service, the history from Aaron up to Christ is remembered. Now let's talk about the public service. So there's two parts to that. And let's first talk about the service of the catechumens. The veil is drawn across the sanctuary. The priest then makes a procession around the thronos, remember that's the altar, incensing while the people sing the praises of the incarnate Lord. The intercession of Mother Mary and John the Baptist is invoked here. The incensing signifies the worship of the shepherds and the wise men to child Jesus. The priest then says the trisigion, Holy are you, O God, to proclaim the divinity and death of Jesus on the cross. There is a practice of reading four lessons from the Old Testament during the preparatory service. These are the scripture readings. There are three readings from the New Testament in the Holy Kurbana. The first one is from the seven Catholic epistles. Second one is from the epistles of St. Paul. The third one is from one of the four Gospels. And during this time, the public life of Jesus and his teachings are commemorated. There are prayers for forgiveness of sins. The priest incenses and prays at this time for the atonement of sins. Prayers to receive the remission of debts and absolution of sins from God are said at this time. Only after receiving the absolution of sins we can enter into the important part of the Holy Kurbana. The blessing of the censor glorifies that the Holy Trinity is done here. 
The blessing of the censor in the name of the Holy Trinity is to signify that the prayer of the church is acceptable to the triune God like the sweet-smelling incense. The creed is recited to authentically proclaim the faith of the church. During the creed, the priest washes hands and treats peace, kneels down before the thronos and prays. The priest washes his hands as part of the spiritual preparation. This also signifies the Lord washing the feet of the apostles at the Last Supper. The server then incenses the whole church towards the main entrance in the westernmost part of the church. This is to signify only the baptized faithful can participate in the main part of the Holy Kurbana and that others may go out. Now let's talk about the anaphora, or the service of the faithful. The meaning of the Greek word anaphora is offertory. This is the most important part of the Holy Kurbana. Only the faithful who have been baptized can participate in this service. The prayer of peace, or the kiss of peace, is based on the command of the Lord that one should be reconciled with God and one's brethren before offering sacrifice. And this is seen in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, and chapter 6, verse 12. The priest says a prayer of blessing over the people with bowed heads after the prayer of peace. The priest then raises the white veil and flutters it. The raising of the veil signifies that heaven is open and the divine mysteries are revealed on earth through the Holy Kurbana. Then the priest blesses the people and invites their attention to the heavens opened. The praise of the angels is when the heaven is open symbolically and those in heaven and on earth, angels and men together glorify God. We say the prayer Heaven and earth are full of glory, which is based on Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. During the institution of the Holy Kurbana, we remember that Jesus takes the bread and wine and changes them to his body and blood and gives them to his apostles. In remembrance of Jesus' last supper, the priest blesses the bread and wine with the sign of cross and consecrates them. The observance of the remembrance Jesus had commanded at the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. According to this command, we remember the death, burial, resurrection, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. In the invocation of the Holy Spirit, we see that the Holy Spirit completes and perfects everything. Here, we invite the Holy Spirit, or Ruho, to transform the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. We say intercessory prayers during the Kurbana as well. When the sacred body and blood of our Lord are present at the altar, we submit our petitions to God. This prayer is known as Thubden, which means again. There are 18 prayers total in the intercessory prayers. Six are said aloud by the deacon. The first three prayers are for the living, and then the next three prayers are for the dead. Twelve prayers are said by the priest. Six prayers are said secretly, while six prayers are said aloud. During the service of fraction, priest breaks the bread and mixes the blood with the body behind the sanctuary veil. By this, we are commemorating the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The breaking of the body of Christ on Calvary is signified through the breaking of the bread. In the Lord's Prayer, we remember that we, through the death and resurrection of the Lord, became the children of God and addresses him with the courage of the soul, our Father in heaven, and pray. This prayer is taught by Jesus himself. The celebration of the sacred body and blood, which is the elevation, 
In here, we're remembering the Holy Trinity when the priest takes the chalice and paten in his hands and celebrates the sacred body and blood. When the priest raises the sacred body and blood in his hands and celebrates, we see Jesus, the high priest, offering himself as a sacrifice before the presence of the Father. In the Cuclion, we specially remember the Holy Mother of God, the saints and the departed ones, and entreat their intercession and pray. During this time, drawing the veil across the sanctuary, the preparations are made for the procession carrying the sacred body and blood. Drawing the veil across signifies the ascension of Jesus, and its opening signifies the second coming of Jesus. When we talk about the reception of the sacred body and blood and prayer of thanksgiving, we're talking about the coming of the priest to the western side, carrying in his hands the sacred body and blood, which commemorates the glorious second coming of Jesus. Each Holy Communion is the foretaste of the eternal banquet together with Jesus. We offer thanks to the Lord, Son, and to God the Father for granting us grace to receive the sacred body and blood. The final blessing is when the celebrant dedicates the people to the Holy Trinity by giving the Holy Eucharist, the viaticum, which is food for journey. He bids goodbye by blessing the people in the name of the Holy Trinity and asking for their prayers. Holy Kurbana, which is the Sacrament of Sacraments, is the center of Christian life. The faithful associate with the Holy Trinity through receiving the sacred body and blood of Jesus. Let's take, let us take part in the Holy Kurbana with preparation and fearful devotion. Let's learn your Bible verse for today. When we are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, verse 23. Okay, sixth graders, here are your questions so you can review your lesson. What is the service of preparation? Describe. What is remembered in the preparatory service? Why is the kiss of peace given? What is the meaning of the Greek word anaphora? Why is it said to be the service of the faithful? What is remembered in the institution of the Holy Eucharist? What all things are remembered in the service of fraction? Finally, describe the structure of the Holy Kurbana. Okay, sixth graders. So today you learned about the structure of the Holy Kurbana. What I want you to do for your activity is to look at this chart of the hierarchy of the structure and fill in the blanks of what you know. Good luck. Okay, sixth graders, that's all for Sunday school today. So don't forget to complete your activity, answer and review your questions, as well as memorize your Bible verse. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. See you guys next week. Bye.